Leo Cousins, standing in uh, Glen Ferber and uh, Peel, joining us in the studio. Uh, Mr. Cousins, first of all, uh, what qualities would you say that you have uh, that would make you, and I, I use this word um, pointedly, a, an effective politician? Yes, uh, so I am a legally trained uh, professional. I have many years business experience. Uh, for the last five years, through the Green Party and through previous uh, political experience, we've been holding the government to account. I mean, arguably, we brought some of the issues that have now passed into legislation. Um, at the beginning of this last administration, there was no uh, talk about it. In fact, there quite, it was quite the opposite way. And through, I suppose, communicating, press statements, uh, protesting, uh, and a lot of discussion, we now have some sort of legislation. Admittedly, it has no bite. Can I just take you back to what experience did you have in your other life, if I can put it that way? What, what were you dealing in business? So I, I, I'm 50, so I've done a number of uh, things over the years. I lived and worked in the Netherlands as an ERP consultant uh, back in um, the 90s. Uh, when I moved back to the island, I, I also had a, a company there to, sort of uh, towards the end that dealt in industrial cleaning. Um, I then came back to the island and did some more um, computer sort of work. But in, in the, you weren't involved in politics at all at that stage? No, no. I mean, my in, in, in the Isle of Man, or my sort of direct uh, role in, uh, in politics is really in the last five years. I mean, obviously, I've had an interest, but actually in participating and organising meetings and speaking to people. Was there anything that, that sparked your interest? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, from, from a Green Party sort of point of view, um, I sort of very clearly remember being about 11 or 12 and sort of becoming aware that we couldn't really... Uh, go on consuming the amount that we were consuming. It sort of became apparent that even, and this is back in the 80s where I suppose consumption was quite high, that uh, something seemed wrong. And in the 30 years later, it's become apparent that we do have to look at a different way of going forward and that uh, things that we did in the past are not really going to be sustainable in the future. Is that what you refer to when you said, uh, and I quote you, I'm particularly interested in what is important for age group 16 to 20. I know what I would be voting for if I was that age. It, what would you be voting for if you were that age? Well, uh, I would be voting for, I suppose, in a, a real pr practical sense, uh, a skateboard park in Peel. Uh, but I, perhaps uh, I think there's a number of issues that uh, perhaps one might sort of um, focus on at that age, which which they're not obviously their interest isn't there, but they don't realise that they can be an effective. They could be a deciding vote in Peel and Glenfinnan. They is the sixteen to twenty year olds yeah. who can obviously vote. But don't realise you're saying the power that they have. Yes, I think that is re very real. The situation we we uh, uh, we are working hard to canvass them. Uh, they don't. I mean, a lot of the issues on the doors. When you speak to people, that's still quite. Uh, I think people struggle to understand the full mechanisms of uh, Tim Wald and, and Legco and, and Chief Minister and how one progresses an issue from the start towards the end. Uh, so there's a, a bit of sort of talking just basically about how tin will works before we even start to get to the issues. You, you uh, say there's a great disconnect from politics, except for single issues. Um, is this reflecting on that as well? That We've had an issue, interestingly, over trees recently, which attracted a great deal of interest. But that was a single issue. You say overall people are not really interested in the whole holistic picture. Um, no, I, I think there's a, it's a mixed bag. Single issues are a problem, and generally speaking, because there are people that are out there who are willing to watch Rome burn over a single issue, and it really destroys the work of people canvassing and candidates. Can you give you know, an example there? That's a bit drastic. Um, yes, I mean, uh, let's... Uh, how, how people might view uh, drugs, I mean, the, um, or cannabis uh, legislation, uh, um, tax issues. I mean, there's a variety. and People can have a particular issue and in a lot of cases. And I do understand it, and, and there is some degree of fairness, but um, in the fact you may say, well, we always look at the economy, but there are sort of even more ones that break down. So when you're canvassing on the door and you're talking to people and you say, well, here's this issue. I mean, I'm a green candidate, so I'm going to have a green tinge. But that doesn't mean that I, I don't understand the economy or that I don't understand um, health care or, or the other things that will affect people. And so uh, with that, it, it, it's, it's, it makes a very pointless sort of um, 
Com- not conversation, but a sort of process. If people are saying, "Well, that's it," and the only way you're going to get my vote is if you put that in. You, you mentioned oh, I'm talking about green issues, but with the position we're in after COVID, isn't the next five years going to be devoted to the economy and getting that on a level footing again, as opposed to the, can I say, luxuries almost of green issues? Um, well, we'll see. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, we do have good financial reserves. Uh, we're not in a, a, a terrible position. And I remember uh, uh, Mr. Cannon pointing out that uh, uh, we could have gone on a lot longer in that situation uh, had it been necessary. So I, I, I'm not sh- quite sure. Uh, th- there are obviously concerns. So there's room certain- for green issues in the next five years? Well, I don't think that there's a question of whether there's room. I think it, it's we have to uh, start looking at that. I mean, if we take, it, for example, the power generation uh, plant, that is obviously coming up for decommissioning. And 15 years from the outset, if we want a, a variety of energy sources and a sustainable way of going forward, well, that really starts at the beginning of the next administration. But they do fit hand and glove into each other. I mean... Um, People, when I'm doing my meetings and speaking to people, they say, well, we would like to have a variety of engineering jobs, particularly. I mean, we attract TT people here. They're involved in engineering. Uh, and at the moment, we're in a little bit of a situation where we talk about uh, well, infrastructure, but some jobs, and, and we, we sort of go into shock because the, the results of them are so painful to see uh, in that respect but so we have to change that but there are possibilities and we're going to have to look at uh, some of these possibilities and these sort of larger scale engineering jobs in the next 15 years Uh, unless other green candidates obviously are successful um it's possible to be honest i think regardless these these issues when i'm on the door i'm not i was just thinking about about being effective politician once you get in there if you get in there if you get elected yeah yeah you have to ally yourself with others yes yes yeah absolutely Absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, uh, on the door, I, people, I don't think people's issues are really concerned with, with so much of the green. I think they sort of accept that and accept that we're going to have to take necessary action. I mean, particularly for me uh, as a uh, Glen Fabian Peel candidate, people are, are concerned with, well, we've got a lot of issues in the constituency which have been neglected or had limited success. We have raw sewage going out into the sea still, obviously, yeah, um, which has not been, uh, in, for decades now, is, has not been decided on what to do with it. I mean, what would your what would your proposal be for that? My proposal, in 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 short, I mean, is that I think one's got to look at uh, the Department of Infrastructure and in the way that these jobs are managed, and the we need to hold the executive, and particularly, I suppose, to get the executive to hold the HR and create a different environment. And broadly speaking, I'm not in favour of having any more consultants going out, uh, paying that cost. I want us to take responsibility. I want us to have this expertise, but it is. The devil's in the detail. We have consultants and people with knowledge who then leave government and then will say, well, I'll do the job, but here's my consultancy fee. And then, of course, we're, we're, our negotiation position is hampered because if we want someone else to come, well, we've got to attract them from the UK, attract them to come and live here and take up work. So it is difficult, but we do have to start working on, on these very uh, cultural issues with inside different departments. Well, just talking about cultural issues in society, you lived in the Netherlands for a while. Obviously, yes. a different attitude towards drugs over there. Yes. What is your view on what the Manx position is at the moment and what you feel the Manx position should be? Uh, having experienced, I suppose, that sort of society where it wasn't, funnily enough, it's not legal in the Netherlands, but uh, it is decriminalised. Uh, is so, that blind eyes turned to, to, to yes, social uh, use? Yes, uh, broadly speaking, uh, and certainly for low amounts of uh, of cannabis. Now, I mean, from a medical point of view, I have absolutely no issue. I think that people, uh, if it's advised by the doctor, they should be able to uh, have that and receive that with uh, with not too much difficulty in that respect. Uh, going uh, further afield, I think the production of hemp, um, I, I know they've trialled a licence, they've uh, had a licence, they're trialling to see whether we can get commercial yields from it. I am in favour of that, mainly because of the use of the, of the product uh, is, is, has a wide range and possibly we can look at sort of combining something in the, uh, in the farming sector, which is also experiencing difficulties and is not very uh, uh, viable. So this could be, has potential to be quite exciting. Coming down to, uh, I'm not in favour of, of legalising it. I am in favour, uh, currently, uh, decriminalising it. I don't think we should be putting our young people into, or anybody that uh, may, in a, uh, at a young age, perhaps 
find themselves in circumstances where they where they try that uh, you know come to try that and, and are actually caught. Yeah, I think you worked course, on a farm as a young person. So the idea of growing hemp in farms on the in the agricultural sector. You think is yeah, well, it, it massively uh, concerns me in a lot of respects because uh, these industries, uh, uh, farming generally, uh, obviously milk and and uh, um, there's a few sort of niche industries outside that uh, survive adequately or, or quite profitable, but the vast majority don't. And we don't really, I mean, we have a policy where we're paying people to look after the land and how they manage that, but... Uh, um, that's not really, I think, maybe uh, acceptable in the longer term. And I think we should be doing something with it. We should be creating an industry there. And that is one of the most difficult things. So, um, yeah. It, just going on to an entirely different subject, public sector workers, who you feel should be not paid more than private sector workers. There shouldn't be this disparity uh, between the two. Uh, well, it depends. Uh, I th- you know, I think you'll struggle to. Some things aren't really negotiable if you're talking about uh, surgeons. Look, or doctors I'm just quoting this something that you've said. I think in your on on your Facebook page, etc. Um, yes, I mean, uh, we need to have a strong private sector, and it shouldn't be made to feel that. Uh, so, I'm one of the key examples, which kind of brings a little bit in, into uh, um, to, to, to pension. So, for example, you work for the government. You obviously they have, a, 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 they have had a very good pension system, which is, works very well. But for a lot of the self-employed, it's an appalling state of affairs. So, uh, but for an economy, is uh, I'm in, I'm in favour of seeing a diverse, rich private uh, sector with a lot of innovation, where people feel that they can. Uh, take the risk to develop new ideas here on the Isle of Man. Um, if we have the private, uh, the, the, the the public sector, if that is, um, it's about balancing the carrot and uh, not so much the stick, but giving enough room on on. on uh, uh, it shouldn't be too comfortable. But we do people. We still don't have, uh, for example, the the living wage. Uh, and so bringing the, there, are, there are many complex issues that surround surround this. But yes, there, there is a point there. Uh, well, I mean, and, and maybe because I, I feel I'm not really getting just quite to the point I want to get, I want to get to. Um, obviously, I'm a Green Party candidate. Well, obviously, it's an important time in the election run-up to get to the point. You exactly. Need. So um, the, I'm quite at ease with the idea is that uh, there, are poli- there are excellent policies uh, on, on the left side, there, there are good policies on the right side, and we need to take the best of whatever policies that we can to move forward. I mean, And you'd be advised on people who you met on the doorstep, on, on the way that you would push forward on this, uh, on issues, various issues? Um, well, I'm, so I'm, cam- I'm canvassing their views. I'm trying to, uh, to so understand their, their that. views will guide you. You're looking to be given a lead as to what direction you should take as a constituency MHK? Well, oh, to, uh, I, I think it's very important to represent people, and I think that's one of the key reasons why I'm standing. People have not been, uh, in my experience, in, in my feeling in the last five years, represented um, in, in an adequate way. You, I don't necessarily need to agree with my constituents if I was to succeed in the role, but I, I do need to represent them. Uh, and that is uh, a very key role of the job. And, and without that, I think that one of the tenets of democracy and what we're trying to do in representational democracy fails. And this is why we often find ourselves in the situations where people become very frustrated uh, and, 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 and very unhappy. Let's just talk to you about uh, another green issue, the biosphere status. You say the government treats it little more than a marketing tool. That's, a, that's fairly deprecating. Yes, so they're, yeah, they're doing I, nothing really. They're, they're just using it as, look, everybody, we are a green island. Yeah. Uh, so and they, so and they have saying? a good they have a good department involved in promoting that. There's a good website that runs that, and people come here. And in a lot of ways, that is great for our tourism. But and, you're saying we should uh, do more physically to actually push well, the case forward. The, the the problem is none of it is enshrined in law. So we end up with a situation where I'm wearing the badge, obviously, in, of of the elm trees which arose, which is obviously about a number of issues, not directly it's obviously directly about the trees, but there's a number of issues that are. It's more about planning that, that, wasn't it? Yes. And so, uh, there's a, uh, uh, so that does need to. We do need. If we're going to have the status, then we need to also actually actively participate in ensuring that we maintain the status and that we have it in parts enshrined into law. We also need to have uh, departments that deal with biosphere issues, so the people that can tell. I mean, it's uh, most people they don't have the experience to tell what is needed for trees at particular ages what pesticides herbicides are used and and how we uh, approach that so we need a knowledge base that is saying 
if we're going to do this and maintain it, which is one of our greatest assets going forward, then, then we need to do it seriously and we need to protect it. Let's just have a look at a couple of issues to do with Peel, uh, the dredging of Peel Harbour. Uh, your views on that? What, what should happen? It seems to be... It seems to be in the air at the moment. Uh, yes, no, it, it's uh, one, uh, another very key issue uh, for me. Uh, the, currently, obviously, we don't know the exact figures, allegedly. Uh, I've had quotes from 600,000 to 1.5 million. But it's in somewhere in that region. It's costing us every two years to dredge the harbour. Now, when it was originally designed and set up, there was a viable, or some degree of viable business plan, but it has failed pretty much at every hurdle going along there. So the costs of it f- way outstrip any income that is received coming into it. Um, so we, it, there's a, a diverse set of opinions, how it enables the, the, the environment there, the business environment, the, the harbour, and um, the, the cost, which obviously in these times is a noticeable amount that could be used elsewhere. How to resolve it? I think it's in the in the detail, and I think you need some a representative that will go in, um, talk to all the parties, and find uh, an economic and a reasonable way forward. And that's not exactly clear. You could do a number of things. You can put a uh, down the side a petition at the wall so it can go straight out. You could remove it altogether. You can maintain it as it is. But it is in the detail. Uh, in the Elm Tree uh, dispute, we saw an, an example of an enormous return uh, on this petition, uh, an e-democracy uh, movement, if I can put it that way. And e-democracy is a phrase that you've used as well, where residents have their say on issues. How would that work? So uh, in the Green Party, uh, we, have, uh, we do a lot of business via, I suppose, online uh, polls and, and such like for people to express their views and opinions. Um, looking at, I mean, this is a great example of people, uh, when they're not represented, then these other forms tend to sort of come forward. Representation of democracy can work very well, but it is uh, certainly, uh, I think, uh, very suitable or, 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 or uh, it will enable other things to have other means for these sort of discussions to be carried forward. So, um Petitions is, is a great way of doing that. Of course, in the UK, it's 100,000. But if you were taking a decision, saying, Tim, what an important decision, would you refer to your constituents and say, let me know and I'll be guided by your, your thoughts on, 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 on emails, on, on a petition? Oh, absolutely. I think you have to have a meeting and you have to go out there. And that is the, 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 where the job stands or falls to a large part because you have to gauge where, where the public opinion is. And to a degree, you also have to educate. So it, it's quite an, an intense sort of conversation. So to, you to would be guided there. Point. We're coming to the end of our 20 minutes which flies by, but you, come, uh, you came out with the phrase, politicians shouldn't be afraid of getting it wrong. So what, what should they do if they feel they've got it wrong? Should they stand up, throw their hands in the air uh, and say, I got it wrong? Because they're prob- probably going to lose their jobs, aren't they, if they do that? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think um, one shouldn't continually get it wrong. I think uh, to create a dynamic environment, an environment where we can try and do things, and there is an element of that. We've been trying and doing things at the moment, uh, and we do get it wrong, and then everyone goes and runs and hides under a stone uh, for, um, and, and says, uh, where's the consultant? So we need to find, um, uh, create an environment, and this goes with uh, the DOI is a good example, but many parts of government, to create that environment where people feel empowered, enabled, and can actually do the job uh, and part of that is if, if you're not doing anything, if you're not making a mistake, you're not actually doing anything and certainly nothing new. Can you just finish by asking one issue? If you had to pick one issue for affecting Glenn Ferber and Peel, uh, the major issue, what would you say it is? I'm going to go with the sewage um, works. And the reason for that is because I don't think anybody would want to actually represent the department, but I've spoken a lot about it. And if, if I'm to put my mouth... Uh, where my money is, uh, so to speak, then I would take that department and I would look at changing the culture of it without a consultant. That, uh, in in short, um, I think is a demonstration. I think a lot of things start from that point in going forward. Mr Cousins, thank you for joining us in the studio today. Uh, That's Leo Cousins, who's standing for the Green Party, uh, for Glenn Ferber and Peel.